So first off, I would like to apologize to each of my 184 subscribers because I haven't had a lot of updates. But I've been busy. I've been building this Warham Tiki 30 catamaran from scratch the last few years. And it's kept me a little bit busy. So if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. Because I'm going to do a complete separate series on the Warham Tiki 30. But now we're on to the Volvo Penta AQAD 40B. Turbo diesel, mechanically injected, six-cylinder engine. So I pulled it out of the block, or out of the boat, using a tow truck boom. We pulled it all out, kind of took an assessment on it. It didn't look very good, quite frankly. Look how happy I am here. Catch me in a month or two and see how happy I really am about this engine. First and foremost, do an overall evaluation of the engine. It's rusted, it's corroded, but I know that the major components of the engine are aluminum, so a little corrosion or a little rust isn't going to really affect it. You can see here I've got some little shrimp in my water intake. And those have probably been there for three or four or five years. Overall assessing the engine, uh, it looks bad. But in the grand scheme of things, it was probably worse. I say that because... There are no vendors that sell parts for this motor outside of Volvo Penta. If I had a small block Chevy, I can buy pistons or rings or whatever from any of a 50 different vendors. But Volvo Penta is the only one that sells Volvo Penta parts for the most part. When I rebuilt this motor, no one else did. But now there's some companies that sell parts for uh, this engine or other engines. So it might make it a little bit more uh, price conscious or appropriate. So I got the engine. I'm taking it all apart. I am labeling every single part taking a thousand photos, just pulling it all apart, the water pump, it had been on there for who knows how long. When I bought the boat, there was no engine hour meter on the boat, which is ridiculous. But that's the way it was. I had no idea to evaluate how many hours are on the engine itself. You can see how gunked up, neglected, Crap built up everywhere. It was just on the surface a bit of a mess. So I start dismantling, taking it apart, still taking thousands of photos, maybe not thousands, but a lot to make sure I can put this back together because I've never rebuilt one of these engines before. Here you can see we're marking the studs on the valve train because some of those are different heights or lengths than the others. So you got to pay attention so you know where to put them back together. So we've got the hat off. We're looking at here. We've got the timing, the oil pump. That's the oil cooler. And we're just pulling everything apart. And I'm marking everything religiously. That's about halfway through what I would call the build, and I'm not looking so happy. We break her down. We get the pan off. We flip it over. Everything looks pretty good on the bottom end of it. The crank looks good. The cam looks good. The cylinders are crap. 
it's a wet cylinder engine, so we can pull those cylinders out and put new cylinders in. Six cylinders, straight six, everything looks fair. We ordered up some new valve guides, new exhaust valves, put it in the tank, pressure washed it. Got it all ready and spent $10 million, I swear, on this engine rebuild kit. So once we've got it apart, we start evaluating some corrosion. And you can see we've got a little bit of corrosion there on the intake of the oil cooler. I made my own epoxy and put some uh, powdered aluminum in there and made my own JB Weld and fixed that up and machined it and we're good to go. Welded up a little bit of the turbo flange, machined that out and got that all ready to go too. Got my kid here. He's a mechanical engineer now. He was invaluable in sandblasting, powder coating. We made a oil pressure me oil pressure gauge and an hour meter, brand new turbo, all injectors rebuilt. Everything's looking good. We're just spending money like we're made of it. Assemble the bottom end, new gasket, start painting a little bit. All the timing and an oil pump mechanism is back in. It looks good. Here you can see we're setting up the timing for the injection pump. I had the injection pump rebuilt also. Uh, here we're just climbing a little bit, getting the oil pump, oil pressure up. We're starting to finalize some things, getting it all ready, the injection pump. Now we're pumping the fuel. You can see I got the glow plugs or aren't in. Man, it's to That's the box with all the electrical components and the relays. New anodes and all of the heat exchanger. Every part of this boat engine that would fit in my powder coating oven was powder coated. If it didn't, it got rattle canned. Here you can see the copper line for the mechanical oil pressure. There's an oil line going in there, the oil pump, oil filter, brand new alternator, new oil pressure sensor, new engine mounts for the boat. We're just blowing money like I am Bezos. So we get it all together, we got it all finalized, and man, it looks pretty. We got a brand new 165 horsepower AQAD 40B. So you can see we're running the oil pressure. Finding that pump, we don't have any glow plugs in there. And it sure does look nice, finally. Here we're in the shop getting ready to fire it up for the first time. So here we go. I take care. 
it's worth it. And you would be going out in the open ocean, and we're not sparing any expense of going out and playing with Mother Nature in the ocean. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'm going to finish this boat build and I'll move on to my Key West Adventures in this boat and into the Tiki 30 build.